that's it. That's it, you guys. We are live. I just, you know, trying to get all the dot, uh, the T's dot crossed, the I's dotted, and and I almost forgot to turn off my Halloween playlist. Hi, hi, hi. I'm Linda with Seaporium, Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Those that follow me, you know the drill. Um, if you're ever in the area, please come down to the far west end of Main Street in Hyannis Village and come say hello. We have a rainy, rainy day today. I had one sole person walk in and it was just like about 20 minutes ago. So it's, uh, it's, it's one of those things and we're just gonna play today. I'm gonna try and get to some comments. If you're watching on replay, please let us know. And um, if you have any questions, ask away. It doesn't have to be related to what we're talking about today. It, it can be anything, okay? If you have a question about painting in general, um, prepping, priming, any of that, um, no Halloween makeup today. We didn't end up going out last night. Um, we had a party pooper. Hi, Shannon, how are you? Joe just didn't feel it. He, he wasn't feeling the Halloween thing, so we didn't go out last night, even though I had all my makeup on. Thing is, is all the parties were last night here, and I was hoping, you know, we'd walk down the street and maybe grab a bite to eat somewhere having some fun, but it didn't happen. It's okay, it's okay, it's all good. We're old peoples now, so, you know, I don't mind sitting at home either. How about you, Shannon? Are you gonna do anything fun for Halloween? What's happening, girl? Inquiring minds wanna know. I am, so finally, you know, we've had all these the other pieces I've had to get to, um, and I'm finally gonna get back to this um, IOD um, project, this haunted house jar. Um, it's, it's, it's a thing. We're still, I'm still, you know, tweaking and, 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 and getting ideas how I could do it better next time, you know, and, and come to, you know, let's just go to here, you know, come, come to think of this, you know, like we don't, we didn't need to try to cut out the windows. Although I do like the idea to put fairy lights in there. So if you're kind of stuck with the idea of putting fairy lights inside, totally do this. Um, but definitely wait for the different stages to dry. So putting down um, the, the stamped clay would have been first, right? And kind of cutting out for where um, the, let's see, let me just do this. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Where the windows go, right? And then um, Before putting the windows in, I would make sure that my clay was nice and tight. In fact, if I were to do it again, I might even make, have it so that the um, stamped clay wall here, oh, I know, right? Kids, I like saying the adults too, <laughs> if we're gonna be honest. Um, I would probably, if anything, maybe make the cobblestone a little bit shy and then cut away if I needed to. Um, because it's glass, you're not gonna damage the glass by taking an X-Acto knife and cutting the clay and scraping it out where it's glued. And then um, I would probably put my, you know, decoupage down first before doing that even. I would have the, the cobblestone dry I would put my decoupage pieces behind the window. I know it's gonna be really hard to tell, um, but there is, see there's a bat and there's one of the little kids from, this is all Portobello Road, all right? And then there's a, um, a Victorian lady behind that window. So when I go to put my windows in, not only would my decoupage be dried and I'd have a top coat on it, so I gave myself a little protection so when I put the window in and over this, right, because we, we, we took the window and originally had eight panels. So four over four, four over four. And I just got rid of some of the middle panes, right? The middle grids and uh, made it so that we can maybe see something behind it. Would I like to try and find a smaller sticker or a, even a tinier stamp? Maybe I was even thinking, um, um, if anyone had like the, um, one of the twalls might have the stamp, uh, rural scenes might have something that would work, a real tiny um, person. 
and I was thinking English toile transfer might have something that could work in the window that would be smaller. Um, but this really wasn't bad, and I think if you have lights um, inside, you could see that there's a little kid looking out the window. Um, but again, placement is everything uh, when you're decoupaging, so you want to work with your, your window somehow, okay? Um, or you don't put anything behind there, you know? It, this has all been an experiment. I do like that it's kind of frosted with the decoupaging on the glass. And then when you put like a fairy light in there, it would be super pretty. So I, you know, I would definitely do this again. And if I have time, I want to do a Christmas version um, and do it in pretty colors, right? Your adult daughter is going to be Violet from Willy Wonka. Oh, awesome. That's fun. So I remember, well, you know me, I have my hat here and um, every year I just do usually just my makeup, just some, you know, black or gray shadows and black liner. And that's usually my makeup. Um, I, d I was out I don't know, a month ago and I saw the white, you know, some, some simple Halloween makeup on an end aisle at CVS. So I bought the white makeup knowing that this was coming. And I was like, well, I saw the people dressed out there, so I just did my simple thing. But I used to really do it up. I used to do the prosthetics for the Green Witch. It's just so much fun. My parents, I'm, I think it's probably because I remember like how excited I would get for when my parents went to Halloween parties, and they really did it up. Well, my mom and my stepdad. And I remember the one year, um, my stepfather was, you know, not a skinny guy. He's, you know, he was broader he wasn't overweight by any means beard and everything right and he went as the um, one-eyed one horn giant purple people eater one year and it was just a, it was just a blast at back in the time and then um, the best one and they did it a couple times um, I don't know I'm dating myself I know this from the 70s there was a show called the flip Wilson show and it was like, you know, along the lines of laughing. It was a variety hour. It was, you know, just a bunch of skits, comedy, you know, kind of Carol Burnett. But it was, a, um, he was just really funny. And, they, and again, skits. And, and he used to do this skit where he was Geraldine. And, his boy, and her boyfriend was Killer. Killer was a football player. And, and um you know, she, he would be all flamboyant, dressed up as a woman, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, honey child, I'll tell you, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. So two times they did this. But here's the, here's, here's the trick. My mother, my little, my little skinny mom, would be killer in the football uniform and the helmet. Um, and they'd don, you know, some, you know, it's not funny these days, politically correct, but back in the day, you know, they had black makeup on and he was Geraldine <laughs> with the beard and all, you know, black makeup on with the girl makeup on over that and high heel shoes and the dress and everything, painted nails <laughs> and he played it up, honey. <laughs> it was so, so fun. <laughs> I don't know why I'm losing my voice. No clue. So, um, you know, I, I guess I, 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 I've always had a thing for Halloween in, in our old house. Since we've been here, I've had the shop pretty much since we've had our house. So, I, you know, and our kids are all growing up now. So it's like it, I just didn't get the holiday stuff out as much as I used to. But Back before we used to live here, my neighbors, if my old neighbors, if they're watching, they know, they know what I did. I was the house. Like I would dress something, I would have something out in the yard, and then on Halloween night, I would get in the costume. It didn't mean if I had, it didn't matter if I had to put straw hanging up out of my hair and my, and the cuffs and the neck and everything. Um, if I'm laying on the ground, it didn't matter. Like. I was that person. I'm, I'm just cheesy that way. Um, but it was just so fun. <laughs> it was so fun. Um, oh, and um, I would be amiss if I didn't show you my, um, I know, I, I'm not going to be able to get this in view, am I? Like, my, my, my fabulous Crocs, right? Look at these. These things, they're 
like, <laughs> they're like so cool. They are gold glitter Crocs boots. And of course I've got my little plantar fasciitis inserts in there, so yeah. Yes, absolutely. It's all in the fun, girl. It's all about fun and candy. <laughs> it don't get any better than that. Don't get me wrong. Christmas is awesome, but Christmas stresses me out. There's nothing stressful about Halloween. <laughs> it's just not. It's just fun. So, all right. So let's get back to work in here. I hopefully have everything I need around me for this. So like I was showing you, um, I, I haven't even gotten to finish painting this, literally have been working on these other projects. So we did have when it dried, I think I showed it on a video that we had a little separation um, around the windows um, in, in a lot of the parts. So what I did is I took a little tube of the glue and I took the fine tube of clay and I stuffed it in there. And then I took, you know, like an end of um, something. I can't remember what I'd used. Um, one of my tools or toothpick or something. And I tried to bring the lines over, um, you know, and just kind of tidied it up. Oh, I was also talking about the planning of things. So when the um, decoupage back here is um, dried and sealed and you can put your clay window over it, right? You have time this way. I, w I was doing all this in a live video, boom, boom, boom. And I would have had time to kind of not only, you know, I cut the panels out for the, the panes out, but I could have like trimmed up some of the um, messy um, from like, you know, literally cutting wet clay. Okay. It, it beat it up a little bit. Okay. I could have trimmed that off. Um, and done a better job. This window here is a little bit better because, um, is it this one? No, this one, I think. No, this is the messy window, okay? I didn't trim up anything afterwards, okay? This is what it looks like if you just left it as I did, cut it, you know, best you can and, and glue it down and then I painted it. Where this one, I kind of trimmed up the windows a little bit neater I sanded the tops where it was raised up a little bit so it's not as, you know, messy as this window. But you know, it's all, it's all a learning process. So now what I'm going to do is I want to get all this black down because um, we're going to do the cobblestone, right? I guess I could have, I see a little gap there. I could have taken some caulk, um, but it's not too bad. You see, I, I left the bottom just glass. I think it's gonna be better to, um, when you're setting it on a surface. And we, we, you know what, Shannon, we could take this to like all kinds of new levels. You know, like I was thinking the way I did this little prop for a door, because, you know, if you watched, I don't know, did you get to see the live on this? I was hoping to do the hidden hollow um, mold for a door, but it's just too big for this little prego jar or whatever this is, some sort of sauce jar or something. Um, so... This is what I did. I did a stamp on a piece of cardstock. And then I cut, I put that over the rolled out clay and cut the clay out, you know, definitely to the, to the exact measurement of the door, maybe a hair inside of it, because I don't want it really sticking out. I just want the door to be a little more prominent than the windows, I guess. I mean, this is all a concept. <laughs> but I wanted to do the, ha the haunted house theme with this stamp set from the get-go.
probably shouldn't be wetting this clay too much because I want to be able to glue this door on. I just don't want too much of the black on there. I don't want it to show through. Okay. So then I can glue this on. And it'll have, you know, the, back, the nice black background. See? So that'll be nice. I think it's going to be super, super cute. All right, so actually, just to be safe, let's just go ahead and do a little beam around the edge. Just in case it doesn't cover all the way. Just a little bit. So then I'm thinking you could even like do this idea with, all right, here's the stamp set, right? Oh, my stool has to be in just the right position. So I, you could have like the, the man with the paper. I wouldn't do the dog. It's just too much to try to trim around it. Or the lady, right? If you had a fine X-Acto knife and you could roll out the clay, stamp a piece of paper with, the, with your image and then cut out the clay um, behind it. But you would need like a real fine, um, you know, X-Acto knife, like an art quality X-Acto knife to do that. Even like, I even think you could do it with this pole if you were really careful, you know, to take a little tube for the center part. I think that would be super cute and it would be like 3D from the jar. Of course, this light would be too tall for the jar, but you know, just ideas. If you didn't cut out the windows, like let's say you want to make this like, a, well, it wouldn't be for cookies so much, but if you wanted to store something, cotton balls, let's say, right? Or just have it just be decor. Um, you, could, you could have left the windows alone and just painted them in. Or, I don't know. I'm thinking like, how could you maybe done a transfer behind? That wouldn't have worked either. But you could have just done the windows, maybe do like a gray in the panes, put like a little fine little white in there like it's a glare. Um, and that way you don't have to worry about cutting out the little panes. That was definitely an option, right? There are always options. All right, so let's paint some more of our cobblestone. Oh. So what have you been up to, Shannon? I am gonna take little bits, I'm gonna add a little tan to this whole idea. It's, um, this is sandbar. It's a, you know, kind of an off-white, really. All right, we're gonna add a little warmth in here and I'm not gonna go crazy with it. Just little bits. I'm not gonna worry about this little seam here where it doesn't meet up because we'll, we'll put something over there. I've got um, toadstool mold over there. We've got, um, what else do I have? Dewdrop. I think there was something in dewdrop we could have used. Um, you know, we could take another, again, um, impressed stamp, okay, and put a bush or something over that, right? Okay, this, and it's definitely one of those things where if you wear readers, glasses, you want to put the reading glasses on because this is all so small. <laughs> okay. Then let's try maybe a little bit of the driftwood. So we had sandbar and I'm not even cleaning my, my paintbrush. Okay. 
if I get a little mix of the driftwood in the sandbar, that's okay here. Okay. Am I really concerned about getting it in all those little mortar depression lines, right, from the stamp where the mortar is, right? I'm not because we're going to be putting um, a black wash in there. Okay. Now, if I was doing a Christmas scene, I would be doing maybe um, a red brick. So it would be a lot of like a rustic red. I guess you could do a barn red if you were going to be glazing. That would work out well, actually. All right, so now the darker gray is gravel road. Remember, I want this to be kind of grungy, dreary. It's a haunted house. And we're just going to keep blending till I get what I like. Maybe a little more tan in here and a little more gravel road. See how it's getting to be kind of natural looking. There we go. I'm actually going to get my hair cut on Tuesday. Yay! I'm so overdue. <laughs> it's not even funny. But you know, that's how I roll. And I'll probably get it cut pretty short because I probably won't get back to a salon till I got to think about having my hair cut for summer. <laughs> you know, that's just. That's just how I do things. Let's at least get a section to a point that I like. And then we can do the wash of black after I get it dried. I'm having fun with my new car. <laughs> Joe really got it in his mind at my 60th birthday. He wanted to get me something nice, so I got a car. Well, they had been kind of looking, but you know, it was definitely the push to get the car. And it's one of those things where, you know, everyone wants them and it's hard to get them. So he couldn't like just have like a car in the driveway for me on the birthday. I'll tell you, this Chevy Trax is a good deal for the, it's a best bang for the buck that I can tell. It's under 30 grand, pretty well under 30 grand. And for what, like, I, you know, would I have liked maybe a big SUV? Yes. But, you know, if you're not one to, um, to deal with, like, repair shops and, you know, having to deal with maybe some expensive repairs if something goes wrong when a car is out of warranty, you know, like, you get a new car and, heck, that's not cheap either. And the bigger cars, like they were over, they were well over thirty thousand, and they're not, and they got tons of miles on them, and you know, of course, not in warranty. So, 
you know, for under 30000 I got a brand new car with the bells and the whistles. That's a good day right there. Right? Okay, I'm thinking without having the glaze on, this is looking pretty good. And it's just paint. We can always just, you know, go and tweak it after and re, you know, re mortar it after. But let's just see how this goes. I love color blending. People get so upset, like how, you know, how to color blend. It's really easy. <laughs> you just work while it's all wet and just blend it. The only thing you got to worry about is where they are with the color chart. If they're opposite on the color wheel, and you can look those up online, the opposite colors will not be an attractive mix for you. But you know, Shannon, you've heard me talk about this. They can also, knowing that can be your friend too, because if you're ever having a tough time getting the exact color, 90% um, of the time, um, all it takes is adding that opposite color once you're at a really close point. You know, there's more to it than just that. I mean, you got to understand, like, you know, if you're doing, let's see, green. Let's see, I got to think about the color wheel. So you have yellow, red, and blue, right? So green would be yellow and blue. So the opposite of green is red. So. If you're trying to mix something that's mostly green, if it's a little more blue and you've already added a lot of yellow, then just stick with adding a little bit of red. But if you, you know what I mean? Like you have to tweak that, you know, you know, like if you're gonna add a little more, if it's more blue than the green, then you wanna add more of the, perhaps of, the, of an orange color, like more yellow and red. All right, let's see how this looks. It was an awesome gift. He's a good guy. Oh, and on top of that, I'm getting all the like, well, because, you know, a, he's a little OCD, and we do have the two dogs, and the one does shed a lot. And so um, we're getting the mats, the whole thing. And it's pretty fancy, like the mats they make for the SUVs. I didn't know this. Like, it's like a one-piece thing that actually goes up the back of the back seats, too. Like, and you fold them down, and it's all like one mat, and it folds up. It's still on the back of those seats. It's pretty cool. So... Hopefully we get those in this week. All right, let me dry this. I gotta figure out this roof, Shannon. This, uh oh. <laughs> I got paint all over my cord. Making messes, just making messes. All right, doll. So what are you doing today? Anything fun? Seems like so many people are saying when they're watching me, of course it's in the evening usually, they're cooking while they're watching me. All right, so let's try this.
And if you're watching on our website, I appreciate you. If you're watching on YouTube, I will get to your questions. If you have any, when I get when I get off of this live, and I'm able to get to YouTube and answer them. And if any of these platforms, if you like what you see, please share with your friends. You know, it's a thing, especially this time of year. So I should seal this so that I don't stain everything a color I don't want. So let me just grab, oh, I gotta grab my microphone for one thing. Let me grab, I got clear coat satin because you know, that's my go-to. You know what, let's just, let's do flat. Let me just, sorry. And let me find my flat. Flat. Clear coat flat. It's cobblestone and it's dreary, right? We want it to be flat, I think. You don't want to shake your um, top coats. Although it's fun when it's, you can't open it, right? So, when you have a sealed lid, try tapping the edges. And it cracks your paint or your top coat. However, if we're talking about slick stick or gloss, um, it's gonna take a little more effort than that. <laughs> Trust me from experience. Um, the struggle is, 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 a, is it's definitely a struggle for them. They're very durable products. All this is available online. We are the authorized retailer for Dixie Bell and Iron Orchid Designs. Um, I forgot to mention that the stamp, you know, that is Iron Orchid Designs product. We carry the stamps, transfers. We carry um, the molds and paint inlays. And I got a really good idea. I do lives for them on the first and third Wednesdays of every month on the Iron Orchid Design Facebook page. And then afterwards on this page I come live and we on my Facebook page and um, again I multi-stream to our website and to YouTube after. So you can always catch me around 720-ish on the first and third Wednesdays of the month if you're not watching on Facebook um, IOD. All right, so let's get a brush. We were up really late. I don't know um, who's watching. Shannon, are you still with me? Have you ever seen Ted Lasso, the show Ted Lasso? <laughs> um, <laughs> we've been kind of binge watching it, and it was just, um, it was a pretty good group of, of episodes that we were watching last night and we were up to, we were up till three uh oh, it's brutal you know thankfully i get another little extra hour to come in on sundays i i put myself open at 11. Um, sundays are usually pretty dead here but sundays are a strange thing it's also especially like in the summer it's one of those days where someone's just going by maybe on their way off the Cape, and it's like, I gotta buy, buy, buy. I want this, 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 and this. So I find, even though I, it, it's not a day that you, 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 you're saying you're gonna, I'm gonna sell a lot of things, um, and chances are not even anyone's gonna come in, even in the summer, which is our you know, big time here on the Cape, because they're all here for the beach, um, it's when they, when someone does come in and, and, and they, you know, like what they see, it's, it's, it's a crazy, it's a crazy thing that happens. It's, it's like a phenomenon. <laughs> so it makes it worth being here on a Sunday. And I always have worked at the, Joe and I always have this discussion. We, all, we always have this discussion. He goes, well, why are you still there, you know, when, you know, I'm, I'm here till 11 at night or something, right? And um, 
He said, nobody's walking around. They're all going out to bars and eating. And, and it's, it, I always have work to do, right? I'm always got to get caught up with something. If it's not bookkeeping, it's merch. I am not the best merchandiser here. Like, um, I get done with something, I, I put it out there. I don't make a nice, pretty little vignette. I just, I find a good spot and I put it there. Um, I just don't have the time to do that. And then I got my little garden outside and the weeds are still growing out there. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy having your own business. You gotta do it all. It's a one woman show. It's really good. Um, my son got Apple TV, and so we got the um, multiple accounts, and so we're able to watch it. So it's on Apple TV, Apple Plus, or whatever. It's it is. It's really good. It's it's one of those things, kind of like Shit's Creek. Like at first, if you don't, you gotta once you get into the characters, like you really love the characters. Kind of like Suits. I don't know if you watch Suits. Suits, like you really love the characters. Like I can't imagine a better person playing Lewis than that guy, whatever his name is, that plays him. Like, he was born to be Lewis. That's just it. You're sick, oh no! I'm sorry, doll. I hope it's not too bad. Hope you get over it quick. Shannon says she's homesick from work. She should be cleaning, but shouldn't we all? I got a vacuum in here like there's no tomorrow. So there's some areas that are puddled with my top coat for the video I'm not going to worry about it too much because they're in the like where the mortar is and that's where I want my black to settle so as long as the top are sealed and I probably could do two coats but we're not going to do it Um, I could use a glaze, but it's a small little project, and I'm one of those where I have glazes because that's what I used to work with all the time. I made my own glaze with whatever color I wanted, right? So, um, and I want to get all this done before I worry about putting bushes and other things on here, okay? And I'm wondering if like, if you had like a small mold like from crafting, maybe if there's like really tiny molds for scrapbooking or something or journaling, would that be um, a good thing to use because they would be small bushes or small birds or you know, something like that. Um, anyways. I could make a glaze and I can use my Dixie Bell glaze, but for something like this little project, I'm just going to use a very watered down wash of the black. Now, if I'm using glaze, it would be an additional coat of um, like a top coat almost. It would seal that, but um, we're not going to do that because I'm too lazy to get the glaze out just for a little project. See? You've just painted in, you wipe it back. If you want to leave some of the details, kind of tap it. And always go to a new part in your rag because you're just going to be mixing up your, um, your paint or your glaze and just kind of smooshing the glaze around instead of blotting it off, if that makes any sense. So we're just going to let this sit in here. If you want that mortar to be really dark, use less water. Okay. 
I don't even know if that was in view a second ago. I'm just, I get in my moment. Okay. And see now you can't even tell like the sandbar anymore because this glaze or my wash is um, changing the color of the, of the paints underneath a little bit. So you have to accommodate for that. Okay, even if you're sealing really well, you're going to have a little bit of a color change when you add a glaze, an all over glaze like this. Now, with like the cameos on those pieces that I've done, right, with all the shell molds, um, I didn't glaze the whole piece. So I was very kind of precise, especially around the cameo. I did a small brush and just sort of just added a little bit of the glaze just around the frame. So that way you can control that the, the wash of glaze or whatever, wash of paint, is not um, going to affect the whole piece. All right. And if I wasn't doing a live, I would have done a better job with the seam. I kind of just let them kind of stay overlapped there. But again, in a perfect world, if given more time, I would have lifted up the one half and trimmed it better. But you know, time was a ticking because the seam is a little bulky. I don't know if you can see that. Right, and always move your rag around. When I used to do this to walls, I had just, you know, piles of, of rags and buckets of water. And on like a single wall, I would probably change out my bucket of water at least a couple, three times maybe. Because you always want, you know, to have as clean of a, of a wash as you can, you know. Unless you're really using that glaze um, to affect the color as part of the whole process. But if you're using it just for like, just to get like a, like a ragging or the effect on there, right, a strie, uh, you want a nice, a nice separation of color. But again, you're going to have some change of color. So it's always good when you're going if you're if you're if you're being very specific with colors that you're trying to match to, um, do samples first and see maybe you have to brighten the color underneath so that when you add your glaze, if it's a dark glaze, right? You might want to deepen if you're doing it as a light glaze. So you got to think about these things. I see a little hole there that if I had fairy lights in, they'll show. So I might do a little tweak there and fix that. Put a little dab of caulk maybe, and then paint over that little spot. But you want to get into all the little mortars, all into the little channels. This is, um, most cases, this is dirt when we're doing this to like um, moldings on furniture. So you want that to really set in there. I th think of people get confused whether sh they should sand off or they should rub on or should they um, do this, uh, t this glazing and, and wiping back technique. And the best way to explain it, even if this was a dark wax, it's the, same, it's the same idea. You brush it all into all the details and wipe it back. This is the dirt, okay? This is the dirt that happens over time. It builds up and it sits in those little nooks and crannies, right, over time. But if you're looking to show wear and tear, that's a distress. That's where you're sanding. Actually, I kind of like in where it's deeper there. So, you know, we're going to see how that happened. We're just 
I kind of left, that whole section was just darker and I liked that actually. Wasn't what I was thinking originally, but that actually looks really cool. So I'm gonna wipe a little less. Let that glaze really set into those little nooks and crannies. That's looking really good. Okay, see? You just, you just play with it. Hi, Nancy. Um, Nancy Evans says, your dryer just blew your little door. I know, onto the floor. I know, I know. I grabbed it, girl. How are you, Nancy? Thank you for watching. Are you doing anything fun today? If you're on the East Coast, you're getting colder and you're getting probably rain. I don't know where you where are you from, Nancy? If you if you don't want to tell, you don't have to. But what's happening weather wise? Let's just put it that way. That's looking really cool. Really, really cool. And then around the edges of these windows, I can really kind of up the creep factor and kind of make them extra dark around the windows, kind of have it be ultra shadowed maybe, right? Especially down below. And then um, Shannon had answered about Schitt's Creek. She said, oh, um, she loves, loves, loves Schitt's Creek. I think you would like Ted Lasso then too, because it's just, they're quirky. You just, you get to love the characters. Okay, so. See, now we've got kind of a creep factor happening. This is looking really cool. We'll do the same to the door. Just let it set a little bit more around the door. All right, and again, this window, and this will be done. We're gonna do a little something at the windows though, because now they need to kind of stand out. Okay. All right, so now for the windows to set off a little bit. Let's get this small brush again. And let's use maybe this sandbar. And I don't want that to sit into the little nooks and the crannies this time. I want that to kind of be on the outside. So this time, um, this time I want the black to remain as kind of like in the nooks and the crannies. But we want just a little warmth because, you know, they, they were like wood windows, right? So um, we could have used a white or this gray. I'm just feeling the sandbar for this. It'll kind of warm it up a little bit. Just like I would put, a, this is how you would apply like a gilding wax. Let's get it off of the cobblestone. We'll have to fix that. Um, if I dry my brush and I just kind of go sideways over the top, it should work well. Yeah. Okay, so that's how that's gonna happen. Now, I really wanna play with this roof. So now the window can stand out a little bit, right? And you know, we're just gonna glue this door on and it'll be, that'll be done. All right, but we're running, we're moving into, like we're getting long and winded again. So. I have the little cap, right? And I had this dowel. I might have to trim the dowels, you guys. I don't know. Not sure about this. 
Um, there's another one somewhere. Um, Cause I have another jar. I'm just gonna, I already, you know, I know I wanna do one for like a Christmas theme. Okay. So I kind of did a stipple of grays and the, a little bit of red because you know, we want it to be like a brick, right? So I think I put my stamps back and I should have my brick pattern in here. Yep, I do. And again, I th I'm, I'm feeling like I should use, for like a mortar, I think the sandbar. And do I have a little sponge brush handy? That would be nice if I did, but I don't. Hmm. What can I use? Maybe this, it's kind of stiff. I'm gonna wet it a little bit. And I'm again, I'm just gonna go over, I wanna just hit like the tops of this, hopefully. If not, let's see. Cause I wanna get that done so we can work on the roof. That's working. I've got stiff brush, stiff bristle brush. And the problem is, is that we're working with the chalk mineral paint. This is again, the sandbar. Love this color for a nice warm white, light tan, whatever you want to call it. And since we got to work fast, um, Oh, we gotta shoot. Darn it. Gotta make room. And we have brick. In the perfect world, I would have not had this on the jar and I would have rolled it on there. So let's do that for the next round. Oh, but it's on there really good. Oh, dear Lord. All right, so let me get a screwdriver because there goes my microphone, screwdriver, yay. Jupiter, Florida, not cold. Okay, well then good for you, doll. Good for you. So I'm just gonna get this screw out of here. I might have to make that hole a little bit bigger with my drill. All right, so let's do this again the way I want to do it. That's more than enough. And we're going to do it like that. Just line up the line. A nice kind of even pressure as we're going along. And we got brick. Okay, so. Still not sure I'm not sanding the top down or cutting it down. Um, but we're, I think we're gonna live with this one because I wanna put this on. Oh, we gotta stamp it again. That's right, we gotta stamp it. Okay. This time I'm gonna use gray, the driftwood, because this is done in gravel road. 
And then I painted the underside just because when you take the lid off, you're going to see that. So let's start with the bottom side. Um, this only has one coat, um, but I think we'll be okay. And now we want the little mermaid shingles. And there is no easy way for this, you guys. When they match up, they're going to be, you know, like this against each other here. But it's way better than trying to um, do this in triangles. It's, it's not going to match up coming around, period. So this is what I'm doing, but if you wanted to try and make like a mask, I would try and do it in like triangle sections maybe, and it wouldn't be as bad of a pattern mismatch. But, you know, that's, that's what I would do. You do you. Okay, now I'm going to do the same technique because I, I could use my brayer. But we're talking like little sections, right? Maybe. We'll see. We'll see how this works out. Actually, I think we need to use the brayer because this is going to be streaky. And of course, I don't see a brayer handy. I've been all nice and tidy and put all my brayers away. So hold on again. Hold on again. Let me get a brayer. I love these brayers. And let's get a little puddle of our driftwood. Kind of watered down, right? And take our brayer. And go right over it. But you want to work fast for this because it's paint and not ink. And I'm going to start at the center because that's where I want, you know, the emphasis to be on that door. Okay, and again. When you're Matching up this pattern, remember to alternate. Oh, I didn't go up far enough. Figures. I have a hot glue gun ready because I want to put this roof on. So one way or another, this is going on tonight. All right, so. Okay. And. That's why we start with the underside. We can practice underneath here. Right? Make sure you come over enough because that appears to be a thing. There we go. And I still have to figure out if on our website I'm able to get comments to show up here um, or even like on YouTube, how that works out with the multi-streaming. Again, it's a one-woman show here, so 
So is this perfect? It is not. It's the underside. So I want this to be better on the top side. Let's try and fix a little something here. It's a little dull. Okay, and maybe here. All right, so do I like that color? Probably not. Again, that's the underside, so let's do a mix this time. Let's do a mix of that with a little bit of gravel road, kind of deepen it up a little bit. But this time, we want to have enough to do the whole top. Right? It's still warm, right? Oh, I wasn't doing gravel road, I was doing... All right, we'll just do this. We'll add a little bit of the driftwood. Hello. Okay. Do as I say, not as I do. Always. <laughs> Always. Start in the center-ish. We'll make the front door the, the spotlight. It's still pretty light, oh well. Alternate the pattern and remember to go up enough. Hopefully that matches this time. Every time I think I'm going up enough, it doesn't. Okay, I did. All right, yay. Yay me. And again, if you're not sure if it's going all the way, just you can lift. And I'm going to just kind of bring that over maybe. No. Nope. See, I didn't go over enough. We'll fix that. We'll fix it. I'm going to go over a lot this time. It's weird. You think you're lined up and then you're not. That looks good. So for this side, all I'm going to do is I'm going to dabble a little bit of this color on. Just to kind of get rid of that line. Again, you want to make sure it's watery because you're putting it on watery.
It's kind of like the cheat for paint inlays. Hello, Christy, how are you? Thank you, thank you, thank you. YouTube channel, awesome. I can see your comments. Oh, but you see, you're in red now. Thank you for doing that, now I know. Thank you, Nancy, you're the best. I didn't know this. Nancy is on YouTube and she's commenting on the YouTube and I can see it. I am well. I'm ready for the holiday, as always. What are you up to today? What are you creating today? Let's just kind of fix up a couple other things while we're here. All right. There. I think that's good. Let's put that in the water because that paint will sit on there. And I love that scrubby, scrubby soap to clean those things, okay? Like, it's the best. And we're going to, oh, where are my wipes? Right here. I'm going to clean this stamp really quick because it's got paint on there. And Dixie Bell paint is a chalk style paint, um, but it does cure, okay? So... Um, if I let that sit overnight, it would not, I don't think I'd be able to clean it up very well. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking a wipey, um, and giving it like a good scrub. I can see the paint into the little lines. Because there's a lot of fine, um, detail artwork in their stamps and their molds. So, um, a lot of times... You know, it's, it's not easy to clean. And then I'm gonna clean that in the sink after with my scrubby soap and warm water. If you don't have scrubby soap, you know, like a, a mild dish soap and a, and a soft doby or a nylon brush will work. But um, yeah, so, all right, so now, let's try this. I'm dying here, you guys, I gotta try this. So, I think we should put this on, since it's a stubborn little son of a gun. Let's see if I can get it on. Or if I have to make my hole just a little bit larger or longer. It's hard to tell the length, right? I'm just trying to screw this on because it's it's a it's, it's a thing, you guys. This is where you need the guys. Like I do, I can I can come up with some pretty clever things to build. I've made my own um, built-in bookshelves. I've done a lot of that kind of stuff, but. Um, at some point, you got. It's like I have to wait for hubby to come home when he was working, right? And he'd have to come home, and because men are just stronger, their hands are just stronger. They're just stronger, um, so that we could get the screws right, right into the studs. Because I couldn't do it. I could not do it. You're creating Christmas ornaments with the grandkids and adult children's photos and IOD molds. Awesome. Awesome. Made a load. Um, that was Nancy that's doing all this or ornaments with the grandkids. And then Christy's Creations is saying, I made a, a load of fake bakes yesterday. Today I've made balancing presents. Santa's sleigh and Santa's feet and chimney. Wow, you're busy, busy. Here I am just working on this little, little jar here. 
But you know, we're, we're, we're doing the, the logistics on the fly. So this is something when I put this chimney together, I'm not going to want to have to take this apart because it's going to be a bugger. All right. Hey, I'm not going to sit here. I got to make that hole bigger, I think, because I'm not going to be able to get it in all the way. But let me step you through what I'm going to do. I am going to use my um, tight bond quick and thick. Okay. This thing is the bomb. And I am going to take just to give it an initial hold in some spots, my hot glue gun. Okay, we are going, I made, um, we talked about this in the live, how I did this little pattern. Okay. And I'm going to get this around, right? We have that little lip. We're going to get it around. I might have to actually go a little bit more. Yep. Okay. And we're going to put this dowel in here. All right. Actually, it'll be easier if I can just, yeah, I'm going to have to make this, this hole bigger so I can slip the dowel down, you know, and we'll have the glue holding that. We'll have the hot glue holding a couple dots of this and then the, the wood glue or whatever glue that you prefer to use that'll hold well here, okay? And this will be the little roof, right, with the chimney coming through for our haunted house. But see how, what happens to the pattern? But if you try to make this pattern, like it, it, it would be a pain, I think, trying to get, you might get like your bottom row to line up, but the top rows won't line up because it's, you know what I mean? Like when you're doing it in a circle, when you're trying to do it in triangles. So I, this to me is just the best solution but you know, you can try making like a mask and piecing the roofing the right way. So before I go, I know I didn't do any lives on our mailbox. I'm gonna putz with this after. I gotta make that hole bigger, but I've been on so long. I gotta get off, I know, I know. I could sit here all day with you guys cause you know, it's lonely here. But let me just step you through. Hi, hi. Hi. How, how are you? Don't mind me. I'm finishing up a live. But go ahead and shop around. If you need help, you holler. All right. This is won't line up with the cause because the angle exact exactly. So we're just we're we're picking our our, our the lesser of the evils, and I went with that. That's just what I did. Christy's saying it was, um, I did a good job with the placement of the shingles. And so here we go. We've got this mailbox. Now, someone had said, boy, did you paint all those petals all by, you know, each one? Yes. But if um, a lot of people who have done this kind of work know that it, it's not as difficult as it seems. Um, I used, you know, various blues, and I wanted to point out a difference, okay? See how we have a tone of blue here and a tone of blue there? Like, they're different tones of blue. There's blues that might have more green in them or um, more red in them. We have different tones of greens. And this is how we help to set things apart. So my sky was a little bit of this and some cotton. Um, and actually, at one point, just a dabble of, of this uh, Bunker Hill blue. This is Dixie Belle blue. This is Savannah Mist. Um, and then the hydrangeas were pretty much these two colors with a hint of peony and cotton. The leaves were pretty much evergreen. I didn't bring out collard greens. Um, and a little bit of daisy, sometimes, in some of the detail work. But then so the pink flowers, I used these colors because see the difference in the tones of the green? These are more of a bluey green versus the yellowy green, the green greens, right? 
Thank you, Christy. Thank you. Yeah, um, someone ran over her mailbox and um, she had bought it from us and she really wanted another one. But then, um, given, you know, with a settlement, she got a choice. Um, she bought the mailbox, brought it in, and she asked if I could do, because she's going to do the blue hydrangeas, and then she's going to have little pink flowers and little yellow flowers. I know what hydrangeas look like, but I just did sort of fantastical pink and yellow flowers. And the, and the easiest way to do these, do you have any questions over there? Good. You're good? <laughs> what was that? Sorry to interrupt. Oh, no, you're not interrupting. I'm glad to see a happy face here. <laughs> it's been a quiet day. <laughs> if we're going to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I know. Are you just reco recording live? Yeah, we're live. Yeah. I do live every, yeah. We're on um, our Facebook, on our website, and YouTube right now. Oh, cool. Yeah, I do it all. But they say it's awesome in here, you guys. So come over to Cape Cod. <laughs> Although it might be hard for Shannon because she's in California. Summertime. Yeah. <laughs> so to give you an idea, like how to do a petal. This is pretty much how I did all the petals, just different uh, varying um, brushes. We're going to take a little scoop of this blue. This is the Bunker Hill. Isn't that good? They're all handmade. And the lotions are natural preservatives. That's one of our artists. We have also local, other local artists. And then we have... <laughs> it's good, right? And right now, for like, if you want to use, if you travel a lot, the cherry almond is also a uh, hair body beard so you can use it on your hair as well as the rest of your body so it's good to replace like your shampoo you don't have to worry about your shampoo using up your uh, liquids on the plane so basically the petals are I started with the dark colors and I did these colors on the mailbox bolder than I normally would like to do them but I'm figuring on a sun bleaching happening. So they will fade a little bit over time. And the ones in the back that are further away, I did a little bit deeper than the ones towards the front just to give it that, you know, that front back sort of differential. Yeah, those are all available online as well. Right? Yes, yeah. yes. Cool. And if you like to craft, that's what I'm using these products. Yeah, I'm familiar that's what with Dixie, though. Oh, you are yeah. good. People refinish furniture. Yay! Yeah, it's good stuff. Cool. That's what I used on here, and then I've got um, about I got three oh, coats so far of the gator hide on here. Oh, did you paint that, that the right there? Yeah, right there? yeah, with the whale. Yeah. Yeah. That one's so cool too. yeah. And then notice even like um, the decoupage in there, the textures. Um, the knob was the original knob, and I took one of the molds from my Anorca Designs and put the shell on there. Oh, cool. And, and I love the, is this the, what do they call this kind of paint? Early American, what do they call that kind of a style? Uh, it, it it's not really, to, no, I, we, that's how we found it. Oh, okay. Um, we have some antiques with this. Part. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think that's an antique, but it's a nice kind of a, a replica. Um, I don't know. I guess it's early American style. Yeah. It's not really toll painting, but it's it's nice. It's it's it, they did a good job with it. Yeah. So to do a petal, I take the 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 background color, right, and I kind of load my brush and I use the rounds. You can use different different brushes and play with what you get for um for the style of a petal you can get, and I just dip it into the lighter color and sometimes in, I was adding a little bit of a white or a pink even after this and then you just literally like where you want the highlights so in the background I had in the back of the flowers I started out with the blue the darker color being you know in the back and the lights going towards the center of the flower 
Let me see if I can zoom in on this. Let's see, let's zoom in. Let me move this up because I know it's not gonna be in view. Dip it into the background color and then your highlight color and again, and you don't have to do it with every round. They can be different. They don't have to be the same intensity. No, thank you. I hope to see you again. Oh, good. And then just keep going around. Maybe you don't even add a full flower every now and then. It's just, you know, they're in the background. Um, right? Roll it roll it and then as I got you know into the centers I actually did a smaller brush so I can get like more of a cluster oh when I'm I'm already going into the next row but I'm not there all right so this time I'm loading my brush with my deep blue for my next row right so this would be my deep blue on the tips the lighter centers and then the next row I did um, the same the same loading but instead of making my centers the light I did the tips the light so this time the light tips are going over the darker blues right And it's the same thing that I did for the, the pink flowers, for the yellow flowers, okay? And then, let me show you, like if this was the different colors, right? Let's say this was a pink, this would be like peony, and this might have been um, maybe a lighter mix of peony and white, or just the white. And since I have a skinnier, a um, little bit longer brush, I can do, you can also do like a little pull. And I get like a little star. All right, and, and I, all I did was vary sort of the petals and the colors. All right, sometimes you can do like another layer, one over the other. That's what I did with the pink, with the yellow flowers. And then the leaves, they were super easy, all right? Using my greens, depending like, oh, I used the bluey greens for the pink flowers. And I used pretty much just collard greens, which is like a deep olive um, for the yellow flowers. And um, the hydrangeas were evergreen and um, sometimes a, a hint of daisy in it, kind of blended in with it and collard greens for the most part for the shadowing. Sometimes I did a, a dip of collard greens and the Bunker Hill blue together for a shadow, um, a little bit deeper shadow, because um, it also ties the blues in from the flowers, right? Um, and to do the leaves, let's use this brush. You want maybe a wider brush. You could play again, different, different style brushes get you different results. Um, the darker part is usually the center of your leaf. The lighter part is usually towards the outside, okay? And we're gonna blend those together on our little palette. And then it's just a matter of like a peak. Okay, and that in toll painting would have been a hydrangea leaf in greens. Half of one anyways. You want to keep, you know, keep adding water to your brush, not a, not a ton. You always want to have like a, um, a paper towel handy to kind of get rid of some excess water when you need to, okay? And then flip it so your dark again is in the center. And then, all right. And then I scoop the bottom. And you know, a lot of times, you know, if I added like too much water on this side, I go on and I do a second layer. You know, most of the time you're working on other colors and, and it gets very translucent, so you end up doing a second layer. If you, you know, say, oh, I don't like the way, it, go ahead and do it again. 
And then on a second layer, you can start, you know, kind of playing with taking your shadow color and maybe bringing that out, you know, maybe bringing these in, kind of add like a, a more of a, a shadow and highlight, maybe touch a, of a wash of yellow in there. Like, look how, like if you just play with it, like how you get some pretty, pretty, pretty details. Um, some leaves, let's try a different brush. Um, like this one could be a neat one. It's kind of, well, no, it's not. Where's like a filbert? A filbert is an interesting, it's like almost like an oblong. And they can make some neat leaves. But it's one of those things, I just couldn't go live on this because I have to be like in my moment to do that kind of work usually. And I don't mean to sound fancy or nothing because I'm certainly not fancy. This really isn't a filbert, but it's a rounded edge. It's not really a straight across. So let's see what this does. Okay, again, the, you know, we're doing leaves. This would be in greens, right? darker green, maybe white or lighter green or yellow, who knows? And then let's see what this does. We could do like that, right? Press down and lift up, right? This could be sort of that primitive flower, right? It could be a leaf if it was in greens, right? That's too wet, but you know, you just play around. And then you could take and dab like little pestles in the center with a different color, like a yellow, typically, maybe a little green first and then a little yellow or white. Always use a white as your highlight. Now, when you're shadowing, <clears throat> here's the interesting thing. You think, well, shadows are black, right? And, and, and highlights are white. Not necessarily all the time. So here, I didn't use, let me see, I can't. I didn't use black at all in this. I didn't even pull out the black. Okay, this is just the collard greens mixed with that Bunker Hill blue, and I got a nice deep color. And I used it just on, <clears throat> on the end of my brush, like you just saw me do. <clears throat> right, just one side, no other color. And then you just kind of go around your detail, right? And then it's, while it's still wet, if you need to blend it out, you can. Okay, and then you got dark out to it just fades out, all right? That's how you do highlights, that's how you do shadows. And then for like the, the highlights here, I mean, this is just the, a light green. It's the green with a bit of white in it. Um, the only part I really have whites on, uh, are on the smaller flowers so they kind of pop out more and the centers of the hydrangeas the rest of it is just different is just lighter colors of the blues or the greens okay and the same thing with the clouds it's not all white but where the tips of the clouds really meet the light or they're jumping out more that's where the white white is the rest of it, it's just pretty much like scratched on and faded out, okay? It's, it's not as hard as it seems. Now, did I go an extra mile? I, I did because it, it's, it's kind of like what I do. Um, I don't want to just do it and say, well, gee, you know, I'm getting paid this much money and so I'm not going to put that much into it, right? I do what I do. 
it's, that's all I can say is I do what I do. I, you know, I always end up doing more than I, than I think because I want to be happy with it. And that's just who I am. Um, but you know, you guys know, like when you're doing something, it's your baby, you know, and, and you get in and I get into these modes and it just, you got to go with it. I was here late last night cause I was just like, I'm in it to win it at this point. I wanted to get it done. So, um, yeah, it was night, night before I was here really late. And that's why we did the teaser picture before. I, and, and, and I didn't get home till like, it was after midnight. It was after midnight. So, yeah. That's that, you guys. Again, if you like what you see, please share with your friends. Um, any questions, if I missed it, I will get back to you. If you're watching on replay, thank you. Um, and ask away any questions that you have even if it's not related to any of this, okay? If you just have a question, you can always ask me. And I just want to put a little teaser out there. I always have like, what am I going to do for IOD? I have all these other things to do. Um, and so it's not like I only have to worry about putting out videos for IOD. And so this one was one of those where I, you know, I have a lot of my signs from last year, like Joe said, we're putting out the Christmas stuff and, and, and we don't get that many people in this time of year and they're certainly not looking for that. So it's like, I don't want to make another sign, which is kind of what I want to do, but I have enough. So I want to do something that I need to get done anyways. And of course it's the holidays. We want to give you holiday ideas. So a little teaser for those who watch me. Um, remember I had a window to do? Cause I never got the second window done. I haven't started that second window. I was going to go nautical, but this time I'm not. And I'm going to leave it at that. We're going to do some, I'm going to do something totally different with this window. And I'm really excited. All right. So hopefully I see you on Wednesday and iron orchid designs at 6 PM on their Facebook page. And then afterwards on my page in on YouTube and on our website. Until I see you all again, stay sassy. You can shop seaporium.com if you like any of the things that you saw today. Um, and